That REC should be. <coughs> okay, pass your homework to the back, please. And that's uh, <coughs> going to collect those. Take your notebooks out. Okay, I need your attention. I need every ounce of your attention for the next half hour. This Hess's Law has historically given students trouble. So far today, I think it's going really well. I've had three classes leave and say, I think I understand. Okay? So stick with me, write everything down, ask questions. Start by writing down Hess's Law. I'm going to explain it in layman's terms. And then I'm going to give you some examples. We're going to work some problems this period. Okay? Write down Hess's Law. Hess's Law states that if you can add two or more equations, you don't need the big word thermochemical, that's what we're dealing with in this chapter, to produce a final equation then the sum of the enthalpies will equal the enthalpy change for the final reaction. Now that's a lot of words. And you guys know I never ask you a word for word definition. I won't ask you to <coughs> delete words and ask you to fill in the blanks. So I want you more than anything to understand what this means, not what it says, okay? Hess's Law. Who's it named after, Kristen? Hess, good job. Not, not the Nazi guy, okay? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> okay, this is law. If we can add two or more equations, then we can add their enthalpies. That's all it says. Let me get your attention over here. Let's talk about what that means. Riley, if you could rotate that just a little bit and get my sideboard here. Suppose I want to make some cookies tonight, okay? I find a recipe for grandma's cookies. How about that? So original. And grandma's cookies has a recipe that says I need these ingredients. So I go to Walmart, I buy some sugar, some flour, some eggs, some oil. I put them all together and I spend $4.52. Everybody cool? I drive home from the store, I get home, I lay out all the ingredients in the kitchen, I'm getting ready to make some cookies and I decide, nah, it's not a cookie night. It's a, it's a cake night. I feel like cake, not cookies. So I go back to the store. I get a recipe for a, for a nice cake from a, um, Pinterest or something like that. And I say, man, I'm going to make this cake tonight. So here's the ingredients I need. I go to Walmart. I buy all the ingredients. I spend $7.82 on that recipe. I get in the car. I drive home. I lay them all on the counter. And then I have one of those. Debsky miracle ideas. I don't feel like cake. I don't feel like cookies. Let's make a cookie cake. Yeah. Cookies embedded in a cake with an inch of frosting on the outside and drizzle it with some Hershey syrup on top. Oh, Put a big slab of ice cream <laughs> next to it. Ooh, we're going to feast tonight. So what can I do? Do I need to go back to the store again? No. I've got all the recipe ingredients here, all the recipe ingredients here. I'm just going to add them all together and throw them in the oven. Amen? Okay. And so I get a cookie cake made out of all these ingredients, all these ingredients. How much did I spend for the whole cookie cake? This plus this. $12.34. Everybody with me so far? Okay, here's the analogy. Okay? The recipes with the ingredients is our chemical reaction. They tell us what we need in order to make a product, right? But instead of money, really what we talk about when we talk about chemical reaction is how much energy is given off or used up for that reaction. So if, if I can make cookies and cake into a cookie cake and I spend this plus this to get this, then in Hess's law says this chemical reaction plus this chemical reaction will equal this chemical reaction then I can add this enthalpy plus this enthalpy to equal this enthalpy. That's a hard mm -hmm. word to say three times in a row. But that's what Hess's Law means. Everybody with me? Okay, let's look at an example. This is another one of these weird diagrams. I think we did a pretty good job explaining it yesterday. Enthalpy is the amount of energy for reactants and products. Now the problem with this one, the reason this one looks different, is there's three different reactions on this one, okay? 
So the problem here is, how can I make sulfur trioxide? How can I calculate the delta H, the enthalpy, if I don't know it? <clears throat> but I do know two other pieces of the puzzle. I know that if I take sulfur and react it with oxygen, I can get SO2. Somebody has done that reaction, they've measured the amount of energy that's given off or absorbed, and they found out that one is negative 594. Somebody else has done a measurement, and they found out that if I take SO2 and react it with oxygen, I get SO3. And, and to be fair, we have to balance this, right? So I need a 2 over here to give me 6 oxygens here. 3 times 2, 4 plus 2. 2 sulfurs, 2 sulfurs, 2 sulfurs, 2 sulfurs, 4 oxygens, 4 oxygens. Everything's balanced. S's law says, if I can make this plus this equal this, then I can add up this number plus this number to give me this answer. Now, I want you to think about algebra. Remember in algebra when you solve simultaneous equations, you know, two lines crossing and you want to find out where they intersect or something like that? We could, um, we could cancel out x's that were on opposite sides of the equal sign, or we could multiply a whole equation by a number to, to make it cancel out somehow. We're going to use those same kind of laws here. Is there a way I can take these two and make them equal this? Okay, so I got some extra stuff here. In other words, is there anything I can cancel out on this particular equations or set of equations? These two up here. Is there anything that's exactly the same on the left, reactants, as on the right, the products? Yes or no? Correct? Okay, so I got sulfur dioxide and sulfur dioxide. <coughs> I got two moles. I got two moles. And one more thing to be very careful about, make sure they're both the same state of matter. In other words, if one of these was a liquid and one of these was a solid, um almost use a bad word. Um, 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 I can't do it. Okay? So they both have to be the same state of matter. Um, and this is gas and this is gas. Okay, so we're good. If one of them was a solid and one of them was a liquid, or one of them was a liquid and one of them a gas, I would need to use some energy equations to change those. That's what we did yesterday. Okay, so this cancels out with this. Okay, the next question is, does this plus this equal this? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, do I have two sulfurs? Mm -hmm. Do I have two sulfurs? Mm -hmm. Do I have three oxygens up here. Yes, it's like 2x plus 1x, right? So I got three moles of oxygen, three moles of oxygen, and the only thing left on the right side is two SO3s and two SO3s. So if I can make this plus these equal this, then that's the same as this. That means I can take negative 595 plus a negative 198 and add them together, and I should get the answer for this reaction down here. Be careful your signs. Negative plus negative is going to be a negative, okay? Negative 793, zero two, And that's my answer, okay? So that's Hess's law. <coughs> hmm? Is it true? Yeah, I, I round it rounded something rounded off, but 792, 793. Okay. Sarah. Why does the formula have anything to do with it? It's just don't look like the numbers. Like the 595 five, and the 98. Where does the formula come in play? Does it like have a new formula once you cancel the 2s? I'm going to do another example in about five minutes, and you'll see that sometimes it's not as simple as this one. We need to do some manipulation of these equations. So just sit tight. 
you'll see why. Okay, this one's very straightforward. It's, it cancels out. We're done. Okay, but sometimes it's a little bit more thought provoking than that. Okay, let me go on. We're going to be done with this in a second, then we'll do a couple problems to reinforce this. Okay, this is the enthalpy of formation. And this is the fifth kind of enthalpy we've covered, four of them so far this week. We had enthalpy of reaction, enthalpy of combustion, enthalpy of vaporization, and enthalpy of fusion. And now we have enthalpy of formation. Again, it's just the amount of energy associated with making in something, one mole of something out of its elements. Jot that down and then turn to page 975 in your textbook. Everybody look at 975 after you jot down. Enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy that makes one mole of a compound out of its elements. How do I make water? Combine hydrogen and oxygen. How do I make methane? Combine carbon and hydrogen. How do I make SO3? Combine sulfur and oxygen. So enthalpy of formation is the energy that's been determined to make a compound from its elements. Take a look at page 975. I want everybody to look at it and find two laws or rules or guidelines that you could easily remember. There's a couple things that jump out at you. This is table R11, bottom of page 975. What do you notice that is interesting? And I'm going to give everybody about 20 or 30 seconds to look at it, and then we'll see if you can predict what's going to be at the top of the next screen here. something interesting to report. What are you asking? I'm asking from that whole chart of values, what jumps out to you? What's, what kind of rule could you make up that would be something worth noting other than a random bunch of numbers? Colby? Uh, Say that you're right. Put that a little bit more concisely in chemistry terms. The substance with only one element has a constitution of zero. Okay. The single elements. Give me an example. Um, Not that one. Potassium, for instance, has an enthalpy of zero. Anybody see another one? Taylor? Mg. Mg, magnesium, is that what you said? Ag, silver. Okay. Notice that anytime we have a single element, it's going to have a heat of formation of zero. Why is that? back to your Bellwork question. Where is the energy stored in compounds? Elijah? <coughs> it's between the molecules. Okay. So why is there no energy of formation? Why is there no enthalpy of formation for a single element? Because there aren't any bonds. Because there aren't any bonds. If I have plain old magnesium or potassium or manganese or whatever the case may be, Every element in its base form is going to have a zero enthalpy formation. Second loop, or law or rule. Sally? I have a question. Okay, let's finish this save that question okay. for one minute. What's the second thing on this list that you can put in a statement like what Colby just did? And he was on the right track. 
but I want to break them into two separate things. Savannah? I don't know if they're cold. Yes, you do, because I've drilled it into you. Mm -hmm. Sally? The diatomic elements? The diatomic elements are all zero, and there's exactly how many of them, folks? Seven. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are all zeros, and they're diatomics. Okay? So, <laughs> elements in their standard state, including the diatomics, will always have a delta H equal to zero. Write it down, memorize it, and know it. That's going to be important in a few minutes. Sally, what was your question? That was it. Okay. Mark, well, there's two of them, so why? There's a bond there, so what? I know, and I don't know the answer to that question. I've made that statement four times today. I don't know why, and it has to do with the fact that oxygen, for example, I know has a double bond, O2. And so why don't we count that as energy? I think because O2 in its most natural state is O2. And we're going to set that equal to zero. I think it's an arbitrary setting to make these equations work. Okay? And if we split O2 in half, it actually takes energy to do that, which is really weird. Okay, so this is the rules that you just figured out. Good job. All those zeros are important. Okay, and that's all this picture is showing. If I take nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur, I can make things out of them, and it could be positive, like nano 2 or I can make things out of them, it could be negative, like SO3. There is no rhyme or reason about the negatives and positive sign. These are numbers that have been experimentally determined in a bomb calorimeter, like we talked about yesterday, and they're published. In fact, I want to take 975 as a whole table, and I've got pages after pages after pages after pages, and the third problem here is delta H sub F, heat of formation. It's just books of these things published, okay? So you look them up. How are we going to use those? Okay, there's a second way of calculating the heat of reaction by using these, the heats of formation from table R11. Standard enthalpies can be used to calculate the enthalpies by using Hess's law, and it ties into this reaction right here. The heat of reaction equals the summation. That's a, anybody know what Greek letter the thing is from math? Nope. Anybody? Clue? Summation? Yeah, this is a sigma. That's a sigma, okay? Capital sigma or capital S in Greek. Okay, so sigma of the heat of fusion of the products minus the sigma of the heat of fusion of the reactants. Sigma just means add them up. It's just a short symbol that means summation. So if I have a big long equation, I'm going to add up all the products, I'm going to add up all the reactants, and I'm going to subtract that from that. Good. I'm going to show you how to use this in a minute, so don't panic. This is another way of figuring out the delta H of reaction using a table of values instead of using some published numbers for reactions like this. And that, folks, is the end of section four. So, let's work the problem, okay? On page 970, 987, please, everybody turn there. I'm going to do a couple of your homework problems for you. Which I didn't realize this morning, but I've done it three times today, so I might as well do my fourth time for you guys. And page 987, number nine at the top of the page. Okay, this is a Hess's Law problem, and let's write down what is given. Now, you guys are not so if you try and do these without writing this information down, okay? You really can't. I got carbon, hydrogen, and ethylene. We need to know, we need to calculate what the delta H reaction is. We're given three other reactions and their enthalpies. And we need to make those add up to this. So the first one says carbon dioxide and water. 
reduces the ethylene plus oxygen. The second one says carbon and oxygen produce CO2. The third one says hydrogen and oxygen produce water. Now this is a liquid, this is a liquid. I think this is gas, 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 a whole bunch of gases here, okay, except for the carbon. This one's a 1411 on the delta H. The second one is negative 393.5. And the third one is negative 572. Okay, now we need to make sure everything is balanced before we start. This has to be balanced, and each one of these has to be balanced. Now, they've given to you balanced already, but I would always double check because books make mistakes and tests are not always as kind as books, okay? So um, I need to definitely have two CO2s over here because I got two carbons here. I got four hydrogens. I'm going to have two of those and that gives me four plus two, six oxygens and six oxygens. This one's already balanced and this one needs the old two, two, okay? So as written, I have three equations. How can I make A plus B plus C add up to this one at the top? That's our goal. So just like this one over here, we're going to follow the same pattern. How can I cancel out things that I don't need, combine things that I do need, and make these three things add up to this? Who's going to start me off? Okay, do they have to be on the, like... Opposite sides. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so the two H2Os cancel? Okay. So she says there's two H2Os liquid, two H2Os liquid. Can I do that if one of those is a gas? No. I would need to convert the gas to liquid and then I could do it. And again, part of what we did yesterday was using the delta H of vaporization to change the gas to a liquid. Okay? What else can we do here? Colby. CO2. Okay, what do you want to do with it? <coughs> I got two here and one here. Can I cross out two X with one X? Sarah. Did you multiply the middle equation every time it's three and then cancel the O2s? She's thinking algebra, and you're exactly right. Just like in algebra where you solve simultaneous equations, I can multiply a whole equation by one number, mm -hmm. and it's still going to be balanced, right? She says, how about if I do this? How about if I take this whole thing and multiply it by two? Ooh. Let's do that. So I'm going to get rid of the red here. Let's just put some coefficients in here. This is a 1, it changes to 2. This is a 1, it changes to 2. This is a 1, it changes to 2. Okay, now what can I do? Laney? You can cross out the CO2s. Cross out the CO2s. I got two here, two here. Someone else? Contribute? Elijah? Uh, can you do the O2s? Is there Okay, so this is like 2x plus 1x equals 3x, and I have 3x over here, so yes, we can. 3O2s is the same as 2 plus 1O2s. Okay, anything else? Okay, so now you double check. Does everything that's left add up to exactly what's up here? So I'm going to pick blue, we're going to go, do I have two carbons down here? Do I have two hydrogens? Do I have two ethylenes? Is there anything left over I haven't either crossed out or accounted for? No. Okay, so now, what do I do with these numbers over here? Add them up. And I'll get the wrong answer. 
don't have them, you get the wrong answer. Okay, we need to do something first. One little thing. Gary, gonna fix it? Oh, we gotta have more product. Yeah. So if this energy goes with C plus O2 equals CO2, then twice of that reaction, that's two moles now, and two moles, and two moles. It's going to have to be twice as much. Everybody I got it? Okay, so whatever you do to this equation, if I multiply it by 5, I've got to multiply that by 5. If I divide this by 2, I've got to divide that by 2. Okay? Whatever I do to this equation, I have to also treat my delta H, my heat of enthalpy. So, we are going to say delta H reaction equals 1,411 plus 2 times negative 393.5 plus a negative 572. Now, if there's one thing that's going to kill you on these guys, it's negative signs. Okay? Be so careful. I can tell you right now, it's going to be the downfall. And I don't want you to, but you just got to watch all these negative signs. What's this going to add up to? Calculator? Lane? Uh, 52. 52 is the answer. Positive 52 kilojoules. It's out. Does it matter if it's in kilojoules or joules? Uh, yeah. I meant like these were given in kilojoules. I okay, didn't write them so down. We don't have to change them back into joules. These were given in kilojoules. No reason to change them unless it asked me to, or unless one, if one of them was in joules, I'd need to do something so they were all the same. Okay. So we can't add joules and kilojoules without changing them all to the same prefix or millijoules for that matter. Okay. These are almost always in kilojoules. Um, General chemical reaction gives off a lot of energy in it as far as you. Questions? Everybody with me? Everybody tracking here? You okay? Okay, let me show you one using the heats of formation. We're on the same page, 987, number 11. This one's a little bit different, and it looks different. So you kind of can tell, even if it didn't tell me to, that we're going to use the chart on page 975. Okay, here's our equation. And they say, where's the rest of the information, Mr. Debsky? I can't solve it. Aha. We're going to use heats of formation. These are numbers that we can look up in a table or a book, and we can get them. We're going to use this equation that we saw a few minutes ago, where we take the sum of all of the delta H's for the products, and we subtract the sum of all of the delta H's for the reactants. Okay? And we very simple. We're going to need to look them up on the chart. So, first we'll add up the products. What's the delta H of formation for H2? Zero. How do you know? Because it's diatomic. Did you need to look it up? No, because he knows. Diatomics are going to be zero. Cool. So, I got zero plus and the heat of formation for F2. Colby. How do you know that? Diatomic, okay? Or you can look it up, but you're going to find it's zero. So remember those diatomics, always going to be zero. Zero plus zero, that's an easy one, okay? Subtract. Now we're going to add up all of the reactants. Taylor, how many reactants here? Two. Well, one reactant. Okay? Look it up on the chart. These are arranged alphabetically on page 975. You've got the number heat of formation for HF. Hydrogen fluoride or hydrochloric acid, depending on whether it's dissolved in water or not. Number is wrapped. Negative? 
Good. You have to multiply by two. Yes. Okay. I knew you were going to say that because you mentioned before when I said how many mole, how many, how many reactants, and she said two. She's thinking there's two moles there, and that that table on page nine to seventy-five at the top says kilojoules per mole. And so if there's two moles, we got to put two in here and multiply. Now watch. <laughs> Here's where your negative signs get iffy. Okay. Right. Zero plus zero. Everybody. Zero plus zero? Zero. Okay. Now I got minus two times a negative. So two times 273 and a minus times a minus. Negative times negative is? Positive. So it's definitely going to be positive. And 273 times two is 546.6 kilojoules. They just round it up to 546 or something. Yeah, I see. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it says use the heats of formation, or if they do not give you stuff that looks like this, go try using your heats of formation. Now, to tell you the truth, we could have worked this problem using heats of formation. I would look up SO3 on the chart. I would subtract zero for the O2. And I would say trap zero for this sulfur because that's an element and that's a diatomic element. So this one is a heat of formation. Okay? And on the previous problem, we could probably use it as well. I'm not sure if that was on the chart, 270, 975, C2, H2 is on there as a gas, 227.4. Not sure. <coughs> is it 52.4? Oh, it is. Okay. Might as well have C2H2. <coughs> and so, and I, actually, we got it this way, but we could have looked it up in the chart. Good. Questions here. So, two types of problems using Hess's law. Number one, this kind where we combine these reactions to make this one, add the numbers up or the one where we look up values from a table. Now let me show you one little trick, okay, that you might need to do. Suppose I'm using this in a different problem. Let's write it over here. <coughs> Suppose I'm using this in a Hess's Law problem and it's not working out. I'm stuck. I can't make the CO2 cancel out because it's on the wrong side of the stinking equation. Everybody with me? I've got three other equations here. I'm trying to make it all work out. It's not working. You ready? Mm -hmm. Flip it. Now, what do I need to do if I flip it. What do I need to do if I flip it? Wrap. Change the sign. Absolutely. It changes the sign and it's legal. You don't need to use this tonight, okay? So if you find out things aren't canceling out, this is on the wrong side, okay? Try flipping it. Change the sign over here and then see if you can make it work. Good? So you will need to do this. Okay? It's not, nothing illegal here. This is a reversible reaction. If I decompose this, I get, in this case, endothermic. If I synthesize it, I get exothermic. Same reaction. It's the same bonds breaking as forming in both reactions, right? One carbon and two oxygens. So it's just going to be the same amount of energy, but one's going to absorb and one's going to give off. Okay? That's what we got for you tonight. Problems to work. I've done two of your homework problems just now.